is Channel 6 News Weekend. Our community here in Texas is still mourning the loss of 20 people killed in yesterday's mass shooting at an El Paso Walmart. And today, more tragedy. Early this morning, another mass shooting rocked the town of Dayton, Ohio, leaving nine dead and dozens injured there. That's two mass shootings in less than 24 hours, an unspeakable amount of grief for the country this weekend. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Imani Payne. We're going to start in El Paso tonight. It's just like chaotic panic, really. Like everybody's trying to like get each other, save everybody they can. That's when humanity came out. Instead of just all for one, it became one for all. You're hearing from a survivor grateful to be alive after escaping yesterday's mass shooting at the El Paso Walmart. Tonight, the state of Texas is seeking the death penalty for the man accused of killing 20 people and injuring dozens more in that mass shooting. We are choosing not to show his face out of respect for the victims and the El Paso community. Officials say the government is treating this as a domestic terrorism case and are also looking to bring forward federal hate and firearm charges. Police say the 21 year old suspect posted a racist anti immigrant post online shortly before the shooting. When I first got into this job, I never knew there was an odor to blood, but there is. And until you firsthand see that, my description of it as far as horrific will be unserving as far as what that scene looks like. We are treating it as a domestic terrorism case. And we're going to do what we do to terrorists in this country, which is deliver swift and certain justice. The suspect is behind bars in the El Paso County Jail facing a capital murder charge. Authorities are seeking the death penalty. Three patients at Del Sol Medical Center in El Paso remain in critical condition tonight following the mass shooting. Officials say 11 victims were taken to the hospital ranging in age from 35 to 82. They say all had been shot except for one person who was injured in a fall. Here's more on the conditions of some of those victims. Eight of them are in stable condition. Three of them are in critical condition. Many of them were brought to the operating room. I believe we took seven patients to the OR yesterday. They received a variety of procedures from a number of different specialties. Some of them undergoing procedures by multiple specialties during the same setting. The hospital also put out an appeal for more blood donors throughout the coming days as some of the victims will need multiple surgeries during the next week. Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke is calling out President Trump following yesterday's shooting. O'Rourke left the campaign trail in Nevada on Saturday to return to his hometown of El Paso, which he represented in Congress for six years. He blasted the president, claiming that he encourages hatred and violence, but praised the city for rallying to help the victims. The president's language, his rhetoric, has produced the kinds of hate crimes that we saw in El Paso yesterday, but we've been seeing across this country so proud of the way that this community has come together and, and will overcome what happened yesterday, um, but also very proud of this community who will insist that this not continue to happen in the United States, that this not be the, the new normal. Following the shooting, President Trump took to Twitter saying there are no reasons or excuses that will ever justify killing innocent people. The anti-immigration and government documents attributed to the El Paso shooter bring attention to the troubling trend in this country, websites that serve as forums for online hate. NBC's Jolene Kent has more. Keep going. Run out that way. This morning, the screed hate things. We turn now to Dayton, Ohio, where a gunman opened fire in an entertainment district, killing nine people, including his own sister. It's the second mass shooting in the past 24 hours and the 250th mass shooting this year. It happened just after one this morning. Police say the 24 year old suspect was wearing body armor when he fired into a crowd outside of a nightclub, killing nine, injuring dozens more. Shortly after, the suspect was shot and killed by police. In less than one minute, Dayton first responder, uh, resp responders neutralized the shooter. Uh, I'm just still completely amazed at the her heroic nature of our police department. The hospitals have had 27 
people treated and 15 discharged as of 10 o'clock this morning. Police say the incident could have been far worse and credit officers who were already patrolling in the area for quickly neutralizing the shooter. No word yet on a motive. Well, it's time now for a first check of our weather. Meteorologist Bill Hecke is standing by with the details. Hey, Bill. We couldn't hear you, Bill. We'll check back in with you in just a moment. It's been almost one week since a fire destroyed the Church of the Visitation in Westphalia. Channel 6's Cole Johnson attended the first Sunday Mass since the tragedy and joins us now with more. Cole. Imani, the Mass today was an emotional one. The fire completely destroyed the over 100-year-old historic school. Still to come, how the Temple VA is helping to keep the memories of fallen service members alive. Plus, how a Colleen Barber shop is making special needs customers feel accepted. Stick with us. Welcome back. Military families work hard to keep memories of their loved ones alive. But now the Temple VA is bringing those families together to honor their loved ones one last time. Channel 6's Andrew Moore is here to tell us how. Andrew. Imani, the Temple VA is now holding last roll call remembrance service. is so important. Coming up at 10. Imani. All right, thanks, Andrew. A Colleen Barber shop is being praised for its welcoming environment by parents of children with special needs who say they often have a hard time finding the right fit when it comes to barbers. Nine-year-old John Pineda has a rare genetic disorder. His mother Nancy says barbers in many states have refused to cut John's hair because of his condition. That is until they went to Bless Cuts Barber Shop, where everyone is welcome. Hear how this shop has changed John's life around and why others in the community love it too. Coming up in the full report tonight at 10. Still to come, Curtis Quillen joins us with the latest on Baylor football. Yes, Virginia, the 